talking about Justice Department Well, issues. people like that, but, you know, everybody has the right to speak their mind. And I use social media. I guess I use it well because here I am. I'm here. And I probably wouldn't have gotten here without social media because I certainly don't get fair press. So I wouldn't have gotten here without social media. And perhaps with all of the hoaxes, you had the impeachment hoax, you had the Mueller hoax, you had the Russia, Russia, Russia nonsense, all uh, scams. And if I didn't have social media, I probably wouldn't be here. So I'm very happy with social media, but I think he's doing an excellent job. He's a strong guy. I never spoke to him about the Roger Stone situation. Roger Stone, just so you know, never worked. He didn't work for my campaign. There might have been a time way early, long before I announced, where he was somehow involved a little bit. But he was not involved in our campaign at all. And I think it was a very, very rough thing that happened to Roger Stone. Because when you look at what happens with Comey after a 78-page horrific report, when you look at what happened to McCabe with a recommendation of prosecution, and you look at all of these other people, and then you look at what happened to General Flynn, a highly respected man. Look at, I mean, his life has been destroyed. You look at a Roger Stone for a tweet and some other things. You take a look at what's happening to these people. Somebody has to stick up for the people. So my social media is very powerful. I guess Mark Zuckerberg just recently said Trump is number one in the world on social media, which is a very nice statement, I guess. Certainly it's something you could be at least a little bit proud of, but it means I have a voice. So I'm able to fight the fake news. Has the Attorney General threatened to resign over your tweets? And then also he said that your comments on Twitter are making it impossible to do his well, job. Are you making his job me, impossible? Yeah, I do make his job harder. I do agree with that. I think that's true. He's a very straight shooter. We have a great Attorney General, and he's working very hard. And he's working against a lot of people that don't want to see good things happen, in my opinion. That's my opinion, not his opinion. That's my opinion. You'll have to ask what his opinion is. But I will say this. Uh, social media for me has been very important because it gives me a voice because I don't get that voice in the press, in the media. I don't get that voice. So I'm allowed to have a voice. You think he can still do his job with integrity, though? He said oh, yeah. he's, he's making a very, it hard for him to do his job He's a man with great integrity. integrity. The attorney general is a man with incredible integrity. Now, just so you understand, I chose not to be involved. I'm allowed to be totally involved. I'm actually, I guess, the chief law enforcement officer of the country. But I've chosen not to be involved. But he is a man of great integrity. But I would be, I could be involved if I wanted to be. Are you, also, are you also pardoning Bernie Carrick? Yes, I just pardoned Bernie Carrick. Okay. Uh, a man who had many recommendations from a lot of good people. You know, oftentimes, pretty much all the time, I really rely on the recommendations of people that know them. Uh, we have uh, Bernie Carrick. We have Mike Milken, who's gone around and done an incredible job for the world with all of his research on cancer. And he's done this and he suffered greatly. He paid a big price, paid a very tough price, but he's done an incredible job. And uh, yeah, these are all people that you have to see the recommendations. I rely on recommendations. Roger very Stone, important. Are you planning to pardon Roger Stone? I haven't given it any thought. In the meantime, he's going through a process. But I think he's been treated very unfairly. Yes. This morning about China and wanting U.S. companies to be able to yeah. sell jet parts. Yeah. Are you are you not concerned about national security? I'm very concerned that? about national security. Number one, I'm concerned about national security. Nobody's done a better job with national security than me. You take a look at what's going on. We've done a great job on national security. A lot of countries are a lot different now than they were when I started. But I will say that we're not going to be sacrificing our companies for all of the growth and everything else that they're ready. They're exploding. They're doing so well by using a fake term of national security. It's got to be real national security. And I think people were getting carried away with it. So I want our companies to be treated. I want our companies to be allowed to do business. I mean, things are put on my desk that have nothing to do with national security including with chip makers and various others. So we're going to give it up. And what will happen? They'll make those chips in a different country or they'll make them in China or someplace else. So national security is very important. I've been very tough on Huawei, but that doesn't mean we have to be tough on everybody that does something. We want to be able to sell 
all of this incredible technology. We're number one in the world. We want to be able to sell to other countries. Uh, we are doing something. We've been in the war in Afghanistan now for 19 years. We've uh, substantially reduced the force, as you know. Uh, we're really acting more as a law enforcement agency than we are as a military, because we could win that very quickly and easily if I was willing to kill millions of people. I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to do that. We'd win that so quickly, your head would spin. And I'm not talking about nuclear. I'm talking about very conventional. But I'm not willing to kill millions of people. So we are negotiating with the Taliban. We've been negotiating with them for a while. Uh, we will see what happens. It's a chance of making a deal. There's a chance. I can't believe it's so quiet all of a sudden. I saw that there's a Senator Murphy uh, met with the Iranians. Is that a fact? I just saw that on the way over. Is there anything that I should know? Because that sounds like to me a violation of the Logan Act. What happened with that? Did you read about Senator or hear about Senator Murphy met with the Iranians? Well, they ought to find out about it. If it's true, I don't know. It just came out as I was leaving the car. Venezuela, sir, do you think Guaido is still the guy to get Maduro out of office? Well, he's the person that the country right now prefers, and that's what I go with. Uh, we'll see what happens. We put additional sanctions on, very strong sanctions, this morning on Venezuela. Uh, we'll see what happens. We're watching Venezuela very closely. Specifically about Roger Stone, but are you ruling out pardons for Stone for your former campaign chairman Paul Manafort and for Michael Flynn, for example? I'm not even thinking about that. There's a process that people are going through. These are unrelated situations where people have done a great job with very, very strong recommendations, but we haven't thought about that yet. Right now, there's a process. I think Roger Stone's been treated unfairly. I think General Flynn has been treated very unfairly. I think a lot of people have been treated very unfairly. I think the Mueller scam is just exactly what it's what a lot of people are calling, because it was started illegally. It was started by abuse. It was phony. It was a fake dossier. And they went in, and they went into the FISA courts, and they forged papers, and they did a lot of bad things. So the whole Mueller thing to me is a scam. Do you think Roger Stone deserves any prison time? You're going to see what happens. Let's see what happens. He spoke to President Erdogan the other day. I think he's treated very unfairly. He spoke to President Erdogan of Turkey the other day. Are I you concerned about all-out war breaking out between Turkey and Syria? I, I did. I had a very good conversation with President Erdogan. I respect him. We uh, have a very good relationship. Uh, yes, I agree. He's a tough guy, but we have a very good relationship. I seem to do better with tough people, but the fact is that He's uh, fighting on Idlib. He doesn't want people to be killed by the thousands and hundreds of thousands. And he called me about that and other reasons. But we spoke about Idlib, and we're working together on seeing what can What's be done. The solution? Well, it's a very tough solution. You have a lot of warring going on right now. A lot of warring going on. But I'm, I'm dealing with uh, President Erdogan. On this swing, um, can you a little bit about news coming three days and also why you yeah. wanted to wait also why you wanted to fly back to Las Vegas every night to spend the night there well I don't know exactly the schedule because I don't set the schedule largely Vegas, yeah every night, stay there. yeah largely the schedule is set by the Secret Service we do what they want us to but we're going to California we're going to Nevada we're going to Arizona we're going to different places and I guess we're coming back here but I don't set the schedule I have nothing to do with it No, he doesn't need that kind of advice. He's been doing it for a long time. It just seems unfair what's happening to Bernie Sanders, to be honest with you. I watched it happen four years ago. And always be careful what you wish for. And I'm not wishing for anything. Whoever it is, I'll be very happy. But uh, it seems that Bernie Sanders and that whole big section of the Democratic Party, or as I call it, the Democrat Party, which is really the correct name, uh, it seems they're being taken advantage of like they were four years ago. What's your st campaign strategy for being in Nevada while the Democrats are focusing on the caucuses there? Well, I'll be making a speech in Nevada, and that will be uh, probably the day before, I guess, as they have it arranged. It seems to be pretty effective. We got more votes than any incumbent president in history in Iowa and in 
New Hampshire, as you saw. Uh, and in that case, I went just before the day before, and I went the day before. In both cases, Iowa, New Hampshire. Uh, so uh, it seems to be effective. I'll be going to South Carolina. They're working that out now, uh, probably the day before. But, you know, look, we have a big voice, and we might as well use it. Are you still satisfied with how President Xi is handling the coronavirus? I think President Xi is working very hard. As you know, I spoke with him recently. He's working really hard. Uh, it's a tough problem. I think he's going to do... I, look, I've seen them build hospitals in a short period of time. Uh, I really believe uh, he wants to get that done, and he wants to get it done fast. Yes, I think he's doing it very professionally. We're also working with him and helping him as of the last few days, as you know. Some people don't seem to trust the data coming out of China. Are you worried about that? Look, I know this. President Xi loves the people of China. He loves his country, and he's doing a, a very good job with a very, very tough situation. If it comes up, yes, but uh, we'll see what happens with that. That's really up to Senator Graham. And he is traveling with me. Well, we can have a trade deal with India, but I'm really saving the big deal for later on. We're doing a very big trade deal with India. We'll have it. I don't know if it'll be done before the election, but we'll have a very big deal with India. Uh, we're not treated very well by India, but I happen to like Prime Minister Modi a lot. And he told me we'll have 7 million people between the airport and the, and the event. And the stadium, I understand, is sort of semi under construction, but it's going to be the largest stadium in the world. So it's going to be very exciting. But he says between the stadium and, and the uh, airport, we'll have about 7 million people. So it's going to be very exciting. I hope you all enjoy it. Are you going? Are you going, Steve? I hope so. Are you going, Jeff? I hope you're going, too. All right. Okay. So I'll see you maybe in the plane. How are you? Marriage is good. Huh? One other thing. Is, is there a search underway for Anonymous? Remember Anonymous? Yeah, there is. Uh, it's not so much a search. It is. Uh, I, I, I know who it is. Who is it? Can't tell you that. Why not? Why not? But I know who it is. Why not? But we won't, uh, we won't get into it. Uh, people, know it's, people know it's a fraud. I know who it is, and I know who some of the leakers are. But some of the leakers don't exist. It's made up by the press. So, you know, they say nine people have said or two people have said and those people don't exist. But, no, I know all about uh, Anonymous. I know a lot about the leakers, too. We know a lot. In fact, when I want to get something out to the press, I tell certain people. And it's amazing. It gets out there. But so far, I'm leaving it that way. I'll see you later. Thank you. See you on the plane.